Okay, it's time for you to be there for your neighbor. Good morning, you magnificent child of God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so you know who you are. Now what we're going to do is going to put some of that power of who you are to work today. Ready to go to work today? Yes. Okay, we're going to change consciousness because every now and then it just comes time to change consciousness. Okay, ready to go for it? Yes. Okay, now in this, in this journey of change I want to share with you an experience that Charles Fillmore had. Now for those of you that don't know, Charles Fillmore was Unity's co-founder uh, with his wife Myrtle and Myrtle went through the healing of uh, tuberculosis by prayer and that took Charles into deep study and he became one of America's great mystics. And one of the things that Charles Fillmore did was he wrote a book called Prosperity. In the time of the Great Depression, he brought to the awareness of, of humankind how through the spiritual laws we can connect with and bring abundance into our life. So it's kind of interesting to me that he has this experience where there are some men show up at his door. And they say, Mr. Fillmore, we're here to repossess the printing press that you bought because you haven't made the payments. Now that's kind of interesting for somebody that's going to teach us about prosperity, isn't it? <laughs> because you see, one of the things that he taught in terms of spiritual law is that what manifests in our lives is a reflection of the consciousness that we hold. That our thoughts and beliefs and feelings create our life experience. Now what showed up at his door was a state of consciousness called not enough. <laughs> Anybody journeyed through that state of consciousness at times? Yeah? Anybody still hanging out there in some way a little bit? Okay, just, uh, it's okay. You don't need to show your cards. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, what, what happened was I, I became aware that the truth is quite a number of us were having that not enough challenge. That it was showing up and uh, now I'm talking about it, looking at it in terms of when it shows up in the finance because it's so hard to pretend it's not there when that happens. But sometimes it's other ways. You know, it shows up as, as not enough healing power or not enough support or, or not enough of that vital intelligent energy so that we're clear and, and focused. It shows up in, in different ways, the experience of not enough. But it, it shows up. And unfortunately, when it does, it's our consciousness we're experiencing. Now, and what happens is, as we work as a spiritual community here, we, we get to create a collective consciousness. And that showed up for a couple months here as not enough. And that says, oh, good. We got some work to do. Okay. Time to change consciousness. And one of the, the gifts, that, that meeting that we have this afternoon is really for people who are looking at membership in unity. And one of the gifts of participating in a spiritual community is that we support each other in changing consciousness together. And as we accomplish that together, it supports each of us in making our, our individual changes. One of the very beautiful things of this of this journey. So what Charles Fillmore did was when he's standing there at the door and these men are very kindly showing him his consciousness of not enough and he responded by saying oh you don't need to be concerned you don't need to take these I have a rich father <laughs> and they didn't know that so they talked to him and they decided to go, go on and they'd let him get the money from the rich father and make his payments. Now they didn't quite understand that Charles Fillmore was using that kind of like Jesus did. <laughs> okay, 
They didn't quite communicate that clearly, I don't think, and I don't know that he was concerned about that communication. <laughs> but the fact is, he did make a connection, a spiritual connection, moved out of that state of consciousness and went on to a very abundant and beautiful creation that came about in, uh, in, in unity, in the unity movement, in unity village, and beautiful things that, that came through that journey from not enough to the experience of more than enough. Okay, now that's not enough to more than enough. Now, we aren't going to stop at that other place we've some of us journeyed through called just barely. Okay, anybody, anybody hang out there much? Okay, that just barely place. We aren't going to stop there because if I understand our work as spiritual beings, it is to be instruments through which blessings flow without limit. And that takes money to do that. Okay, or health or vitality or clarity, whatever it is, and just barely makes it hard to be that blessing. So not enough to more than enough. So that's our journey. And I want to sh share with you a couple experiences from, from the Gospels, from Jesus' experience. Now, the truth is, I don't know if these actually happened or not or if they were captured accurately by the people that wrote them down many years later. But what I have come to realize and understand is that in the pictures that are portrayed here, they're symbolically talking about very powerful movements within us. That it's a picture of spiritual transformation. And so I want to look at these because they're showing this amazing journey from not enough to more than enough. This, the first one now is, is one we're most of us quite familiar with. It's that feeding of the 5,000. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Okay. Journey from not enough to more than enough. Now let me share another one. This is after the experience of resurrection. The disciples are out in the boat. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the f net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning there with fish on it and some bread. So we have another experience from not enough to more than enough. A number of things exist in these, in these two experiences. Symbolically, the change happens when the shift is to Jesus. Okay, now Jesus is, is a symbol. Jesus is seen as that 
expression of the Christ self or that capacity within each of us to know and experience our oneness and to body the full power of the spiritual self in our lives. That which is called the Christ self or in the Hindu work the Atman, the Buddha mind, the I am. So he is the symbol of that and that's the shift occurs when the focus is there. Now in both of these what he does is he distributes that it's the disciples that end up bringing the fish to the people or in bringing the, uh, the presence. Fish is a, a symbol of divine idea. Okay, so from bringing idea, if you see the, in the uh, one where they're fishing, it's actually they have to pull it from the water, which is a symbol of bringing it from, from the subconscious into the manifest. And in the uh, feeding of the 5,000, it's the disciples who are there passing it out. Now, the disciples are symbols of spiritual faculties or aspects within each of us. So the ability that is quickened by the focus on Jesus or the divine incarnate in, in the human experience, okay, then quickens the spiritual faculties within us, our strength, our faith, our wisdom, our power, so that we are then able to draw forth into manifestation that which is needed and more. So we have a beautiful picture of a change of consciousness and it happens first of all with the focus on the Jesus symbol and then the change, the quickening that happens within us as it moves from spiritual energy or substance into manifestation. Bread is a symbol of, sub, of spiritual substance. You have both the bread and, and the fish in both situations. So that's a that is the change of consciousness. Now, one of the, one of the very exciting things, uh, next Sunday we've asked uh, Dr. Kim Clarity to be here, and one of the reasons is she has a wonderful understanding of the Higgs boson particle when we had question and answer a number of uh, months ago. A question came up about that, and I've, I've touched it a little, but it's it's if you will, it's looking at this story from science instead of symbology. Because science is begin, beginning to help us understand how we draw from this infinite energy in which we live into the experience of manifestation. So a very exciting exploration. And then another, uh, another reason that we've asked her to be here is in her workshop she'll be working with the ability to turn that into guidance that lets us follow through on that manifestation process. A very, very talented woman and we're, we're pleased to have her here. But it's that same thing, isn't it? It's bringing something from being present in the spiritual into manifest form so we can put it to work in our lives. I want to go over how we do it. In most systems, what you'll see is the understanding that the reason this is manifesting, the reason there's not enough or there's a limitation in some part of my life is a belief structure. Something that says I'm not worthy, I'm not okay, or, you know, we're in, life should be hard, it should be a struggle. All these things that come from many different places within our, our cultures and our backgrounds and our experiences and block that flow. And in most systems, what they do is encourage you to work with those beliefs. Or, as I think of it, have a debate with yourself. This is very different. The focus is not on the limitation. The focus is on the power and the presence that is the abundance itself. How do we do that?
it becomes powerful when we experience it within the feeling nature. The way that I have found it successful in my own experience, and I'm not going to go into the stories because I've shared them before, but the, the experience hinges around the experience of love itself. When I experience that love, that is the same thing that we're talking about, symbology of the focus upon Jesus in the story. Because it is the experience of the divine presence within me. And I experience that at depth. God is love. When I touch that, I am touching that divine presence. So I want to share with you three steps. The first is, I am loving. I am loving. Okay, now in this, what happens is we can enter into the experience of feeling love for another. You've, you've done that. You do it all the time. You actually are there and you are feeling love for someone. Okay, then from that experience of feeling love for someone, I am loving, we make the shift into the experience of I am loved. Letting ourselves feel the love that is here within us for us. And you are so deeply loved. So completely loved without limit. Without condition. Because you are that magnificent child of the divine and you are that loved and you can experience that love Again, the, ent the entry into it is easier if it is I am loving so we feel the love that, that we extend to others and then I am loved and then it completes in I am love and this has always been so interesting to me. It's like that gentle kind of as we get from that feeling of being loved and we, we step up and begin to go forth. And suddenly we realize we're carrying that love with us. It's who we are. We are that love. I am love. And you are. Where you go, that love is present through you. I am loving I am loved, I am love. Join me. I am loving, I am loved, I am love. Again. I am loving, I am loved, I am love. Once again. I am loving, I am loved, I am love. Now to bring it into our experience. Let's take and just move through it very simply. Okay, right now just join me in that I am loving. You feel your love for someone in your life. Just send it out. It's fun. It feels good. Yeah, just send that love out. I am loving. Yes, you are. Now I am loved. Without that focus, now let that feeling of love be there. It is in you. It is for you. I am loved. Enjoy that beautiful feeling. Now as you take that breath and just bring full attention back to the outer. I am love. Carry it with you as you walk. It's who you are. Okay? See the, see the, see the steps? Okay. Now, 
they aren't difficult. They do take focus and intention to do them. But what happens is in the presence of that love, limitation cannot exist. Love dissolves all that is unlike itself. So as you enter into that feeling of love, those beliefs that are blocking, those perceptions and messages that are there, lose their power because the love is what is creating in your life. And so we step forth then into more than enough. Would you be willing to make a commitment to really help us change this state of consciousness. To take the next two weeks and daily take, and it, it, it takes around 15 minutes to really sit there and, and you know, sincerely go through, through those steps. Be willing to do that so that First of all, any limits that are there in your life, it's just time for them to go. And but as we do that, then also we support others who are maybe in a deeper state of struggle than you are. So they can release those limits and step into that fullness. And we manifest that within our collective experience as well. Would you be willing to give the next two weeks to, to do it? Yes. Okay. So two weeks. 15 minutes each day and really let yourself have that experience of that love. Let its power be in you. I am loving. I am loved. I am love. Together. I am loving. I am loved. I am love. Once again, from that depth of your heart. I am loving. I am loved. I am loved. And as you hold that, whatever is needed will be met because you've got a rich father. Yeah. <laughs>